Hey guys, how you doing? It's Alex and what I want to do today is I want to help you guys visualize what happens in a Gen 2 6R80 car when it comes to the converter and how the lockup looks, in my opinion, in a data log. It's kind of hard to understand where I'm coming from. But this is what I'm trying to do. What I'm trying to do is help you visualize in, an, in a graph form what a torque converter is doing on a 6R80 Gen 2 car. So that we're talking 15 to 17 Mustang with a 6R80 transmission. So what I have here is a very crude graph. I'm terrible at drawing, so please uh, apologies in advance. So what we have here is mile an hour and we have RPM. So what I'm trying to illustrate here, for the point of this illustration, we're gonna move these RPMs up a little bit. We're gonna start at 1500, 2500 because this is where the car mostly cruises at. So let's say you have a bone stock converter on a 2015 to 17 Mustang 6R80 equipped vehicle. Well, when you're driving, the way I visualize what the RPM is doing when a converter starts to lock up is as follows. So this is a stock converter, red graph. You're at a light, you take off. So it does one, two, two, three, lock up then a three, four. Well, what, is that, what does that look like? Well, we take off from a light, we go, uh, uh, what is that dip right there? So, uh, it, and then it starts to roll off and do four, five, five, six. So one, two, two, three, lock up, right? This little dip right here is the converter locking up. You barely notice it on a stock stall speed 6R80. Well, what happens is, this is a 3-4, sorry. This, uh, this would be 3-4. 3-4, and you're about 40, 45 miles an hour, give or take. So again, the way I do it is I, I make noises like a, like, a, like a dumbass. I go, Okay, now the, the, the converter can either lock up depending on pedal position after the two, three shift, or if you have higher pedal position after the three, four shift, depending on how the tune is configured. Now, that's normal operation. One, two, two, three, lock up, three, four. So what happens when you have an aftermarket converter? What happens when you have an aftermarket, let's say a circle D, three C? Kind of a loose converter that a lot of people run on their TVS cars. So what happens when you have a Circle D 3C converter in a 6R80 Mustang is the stall speed is higher. When you leave a light on a stock converter, you, it, won't, it won't really go that much past 2000 RPMs at low throttle positions. But when you leave a light with a looser torque converter that has a higher stall speed, well, what happens? It goes, and what happens right around here that you guys start to think is some kind of bogging situation? The converter locks up. So because the stall speed is that much different between a stock converter and a, let's say a Circle D3C, when you leave a light, you will have a higher RPM, but when the converter starts to lock, it will be a more severe lock because it's trying to lock up similar to this one trying to lock up here. This is a slightly exaggerated uh, graph. Let's do something more realistic. Let's say it's something more like this, but the lockup is more severe. So whoa! And that is not a shift. And you guys hear a what you call a bog. Whereas a stock converter, because the stall speed is lower. So yes, I make noises when I look at data logs. Because the stall speed is lower, the lockup seems less severe. The higher the stall speed, the more severe when a converter is coupled 
seems. It seems like a, a bog or it really drags down the RPMs and a lot of you guys call that a bog. So let's talk about what happens at wide open throttle with the same situation. Stock torque converter, let's say 800 horsepower TVS car. All right, stock torque converter, 800 horsepower TVS car. Well, you're at the track, you stall it up to about 2200 because that's as high as it'll let you go. And then you forget the mile an hour here, like literally forget the mile an hour. So now the car goes wham, one, two, lock up. Then you see that. Now that is what happens on the ship. So this is a one, two, one, two, two, three, lock up, and then the three, four, and then usually by that time, if it's got 315 gears, you're going over 135 miles an hour and you let off at about 800 horsepower or 140 miles an hour. So again, you launch the car. This is the stock factory stall speed, okay? Stock stall. It launches, does a one, two, two, three, converter locks. Now you want the converter to couple because what happens is you are now transferring, I'm sorry, you want the converter to lock because what you are now doing is you're transferring more torque to the rear wheels. The goal is to get as much torque transferred to the rear wheels as possible. So typically what happens is you get a one, two, two, three, then a lock up. And I know you're gonna ask, well, why don't you just leave it unlocked? Well, it all depends on the configuration of the converter. If you have a converter that, let's say, like a 3C, and you don't lock it, you're liable to go slower. Now, what happens when you don't lock a converter under steady state cruising speeds? Let's say you, you don't, I don't want my converter, Alex, I don't want my converter locked, fuck, you know, screw that, I just want to unlock it all the time. Okay, so your 6R80 car is gonna go one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, but your mile an hour, okay, your mile an hour will look pretty steady like this. Okay, when you're cruising on the graph, on the data log, one, two, two, three, one, you know, it'll just float. What, what happens when you don't lock a converter? Everything gets hotter. Everything gets hotter. Trans fluid gets hotter. Trans gets, everything gets hotter if you don't lock the converter and let it couple and transfer the torque properly. So what happens when you do lock a converter? Well, let's say right here, you do lock the converter. And you have that noticeable dip that we see on the data log. Well, what happens to the mile and hour graph, believe it or not, is it slightly goes up like a very slight raise uh, in a data log. And again, this is my observation. This is not scientific at all. So what you see is the one, two, two, three lock up. Now it transferred more torque and mile an hour goes up as opposed to that steady slow climb that you were seeing when the converter wasn't coupled and it was a, a more steady climb. Whereas the converter being locked up actually transfers more torque and allows the car to get going better. Now, typically a lot of people under wide open throttle conditions think that the converter should stay unlocked. Well, again, depending on how your converter is built, you might want or not want a, a, a lockup situation. For example, a 252 converter, is it 252 or 250? I think it's a 252 converter without lockup clutches couples because the way the stator the way everything is built it's meant to couple so what you'll see if you have let's say a turbo car if you have a turbo car right you get up on the chip this is blah, 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 blah. again this is a 12 1300 horsepower car with a 252 converter no lockup clutch well you'll see a one two two, three, and then you'll start to see a long, long, you know, final gear, if it's a 4R200 or a 6R80. 
uh, you could either just add another bump and call that your 3-4. So what will happen is, let's say it's a 6 already with six, 6 gears, this final RPM graph will be longer. Actually, let's do a TVS car because TVS cars don't have a two-step <laughs> typically. So let's say you launch the car and your foot braking so it looks more steady. And let's say it's a 6R80 car. It'll go one, two, two, three, and then it'll go up and then down because the converter now is coupling, I'm sorry, locking, and you'll see a very long final gear on the data log. So one, two, two, three, converter locks. One, two, two, three. Convert it locks, bam, and then way the hell up here, you'll see the three, four. And you'll say, wait a minute, Alex, it's not consistent. I want it to go. Wah, bah, 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 bah. And a locked converter mile an hour graph actually looks like this. From what from actually mile an hour, if the shifts are proper, there should be a little bump here because the tires kind of tend to spin, a little bump here. And right around here, you'll kind of see the mile an hour graph start to climb at a faster rate because you are now transferring more torque when the converter is coupling or locking. Whether you have a converter built without lock of clutches but meant to couple hardcore or a, a, a converter with a lock up and you lock it at a precise moment that you feel is optimal based on the tuning, you will actually see that torque transfer raise mile an hour um, nicely. So that's what I wanted to talk about real quick. I wanted to sort of start making these videos that visually represent in my head what's going on in the data log, showing you converter coupling, converter slip, potential um, visualization of coupling versus lockup, where a lot of people want the car to just never lock up. I've heard people say the craziest things to me. They say, Alex, I never want the car to lock up. I want the thing to keep it unlocked, see what happens. Well, if you keep it unlocked, you have a TVS car, launch at 2,500, boom, 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 one, two, two, three, three, four, and it just rides out versus a lockup situation where it does the same thing, right? A lockup situation, one, two, two, three, Converter couples, something similar, or you can pretty much negate that. The coupling of the lockup clutches, or if it's a converter that couples like a 252, will actually net you a quicker ET than something that is slipping the whole time, wasting its time revving and doing dumb shit, uh, as opposed to um, it being locked up in an optimal position that we feel is best for the vehicle. So. We'll talk about other transmission stuff, trans, slip, and stuff like that. But before I do any of that, I want to see how this video does. And if you guys appreciate a visual representation of what a lockup does versus of what a non-lockup does. Thanks for listening, guys. Talk to you later.